Hi everyone. So within the universe of constructive program, Gandhi had a project called Heart Unity, and I'd like to land on that one for a little bit. If you were to ask yourself what is the most agonizing problem going on in our country today, I suppose you'd come up with uh, one big one and one that's very close to it. And the big one is racism, the uh, differences and the conflicts and violence that's happening between races in our country. It's become really scary. And the other one is the disparities in wealth, which existed in Gandhi's time. He pointed out to a viceroy at one point that he, the viceroy, was earning 5,000 times more than an average Indian worker, but that's gone to obscene proportions. In our day, it was bad when I wrote search for nonviolent future and it's gotten worse and there doesn't seem to be anything counteracting that trend really. You're just going to take massive nonviolent resistance of the appropriate kinds. And so heart unity was a brilliant concept that really embraces the division we've been talking about all along between what a person is doing to you and your respect for that person as a human being. We have one friend who calls this the two hands of nonviolence. I will not accept your injustice, but I am open to you as a human being. Uh, so heart unity meant that you are able to find the essential human unity between yourself and anyone else, despite any differences on the surface. Now, some of those differences have to be resisted. They're unfair, they're unjust. But there's a fine line, but an extremely powerful one, between resenting the advantage of another person and not accepting them as an injustice. So within Gandhi's economic scheme, for example, how would you approach the differences in wealth? not by trying to level everybody out, because it's not just realistic. Some people are more interested in acquiring wealth and more capable of doing it. What you wanted to do was bring in the concept of trusteeship so that a wealthier person would regard his or her endowment as a trust that he or she needed to use for the good of the community. And so heart unity provides the basis of loving community, as which I say, which means real community. You know, community without love is no community, really. So of the 18 projects in Gandhi's constructive program as a whole, almost five or six of them dealt directly with heart unity, that there must be unity between capital and labor, between, of course, the different religious communities, Hindu and Muslim. And that doesn't ever mean that a Muslim should become a Hindu or vice versa, but you would respect the other person so the, and the other person's faith. So this hangs together with the very big concept of unity and diversity, which uh, seems to be difficult for us to understand, but it is critical that we understand it. So the idea of heart unity provided a guideline for adjudicating these differences, for example, between the races. In my earlier incarnation as a folk singer in New York, there was a, a song that we liked but began to get suspicious of the words where it said, uh, there'll be no distinction there. There'll be no distinction there. There'll be no distinction there. And we'll all be white in that heavenly light, and so on and so forth. And uh, I think we rightly suspected that this was the wrong approach. And uh, for us to resolve the issue of racism does not mean making the races the same, but it means having them have the same respect for themselves and for one another.